Hello and welcome to part 20 and the final part of the e-commerce website building lesson series. Part 20 leaves you with an IPN script that I will supply you with that I wrote using my blood and sweat and tears. Alright, so for you to have a cool little system, there's one more thing I have to put in cart.php. This variable is going to let your IPN script know what the person checked out for, which product ID, and how many of that product ID they checked out for. This way we can cross-reference the amounts in the database to make sure that they paid the right amount for what they had supposedly checked out for. So the first thing we'll do is go down here where we're rendering out the PP checkout button under the for each loop. And I'm going to put a line break there. I'm going to add one more variable that's going to be sent. And it's going to be name of custom, which you can cross-reference that list that I gave you in part 19 of this video series. I gave you guys a couple of links in that list as the custom variable that you can research. It just lets you pretty much send a custom variable, whatever you want. And I'm going to send a variable called product ID array. So let's take product ID array and we have to initialize that up top, above the for each loop, right here with all these other initialized variables. So let's get that one in. Now to assemble that variable is pretty simple. You go into the for each loop and let's put it right here under dynamic checkout button assembly. There we go. Let's create the product array variable. So the product array variable is going to be, I'll, t I'll show you what it'll, it'll look like. It's going to look something like this. So the first product they buy is ID of 6. The second product they bought is ID of 8. The third product they bought is ID of 3. So the string would look like this. 6, and then the quantity, and then a comma. Then product ID of 8, the quantity for that, and a comma. Then the product ID 3, the quantity for that, and a comma. That's what that string is going to look like. So if product ID of 8, if they had 5 of those, quantity would be 5. So you can see there's the ID hyphen and then the quantity and a comma delimits each little pair. So that's what it's going to wind up looking like, this product ID array. We're going to need that in a My IPN script to do the price checking automatically. So your IPN script will be sent a custom variable because you're sending that custom variable to PayPal initially. So it's going to send it back. Now remember to make these variables in this script correct for your site. And you have to create these pages. PayPal cancel, that can be just a static page that says you have canceled your transaction, continue shopping. It doesn't have to be anything special or, or magical. Just a page that says you canceled your transaction. And then checkout complete. That can be just a static page that says thank you for your order. Now here's a little hint. You can get PDT variables from PayPal posted to that page by setting this RM variable to 2. So once you set a return, this is the page that they'll land on when they come back. You can get PDT variables from PayPal automatically on that page just by assigning this RM variable to 2. So if you wanted to say thank you John Smith for your order blah 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 you can get all those personal variables back from PayPal. But I'm not going to be showing you that because this is part 20 and we're done. Uh, I'm just going to show you the IPN script that way all of these variables come back to your backend system for each transaction. So say you wanted to do things like give people instant downloads or things like that, you'll be open to do those sort of things with the IPN script. Alright, so now let's discuss the PayPal IPN script. Now before I explain this IPN script, you should now be able to download it along with all of the other files. I placed the source code link in the description of this video. You can get all of my code now from the entire tutorial series if you need it. Now this is not the first PHP IPN script ever written. In fact, if you just go to Google, and you type into the search bar PayPal PHP IPN example the first result is PayPal X the CMS dot PayPal dot com and you see here's the PayPal APIs IPN PDT and this is the payment data transfer variables that I was talking to you about 
for the return URL if you ever want to implement those. But instant payment notification is the one we want. We want to see an example of ASP, Cold Fusion, Java, Perl, PHP. We want to see the PHP example. So there you go. So PayPal themselves show you a nice PHP example and a whole bunch of other examples. I just wanted to show you that because there are there's got to be thousands of different I, PHP IPN script examples that you can get. The one I'm showing you here, I just happen to custom write for our tutorial series, so it might benefit you to look this one over and use this one. And I'll also have you note that I have not tested this. I just kind of wrote it out from what I think it should do with our little custom system. So this script works with our system here in a custom fashion. But I coded it without testing it, so if it fails, it's up to you to make the programming meet the logic for what it's intended to happen in it. Because after this video, I'm moving on to other material and not looking back at this series. We've gone good and deep here. So if this script doesn't work, like I said, I haven't tested it. I just wrote it out for how I think it should work. And if it happens to not work that way, just make PHP do it. PHP can do anything. So all you have to do is have a plan and then attack it with PHP. Knock out every little piece of the programming you need as it comes your way. Okay, here's how it works. Shopper checks out at the PayPal gateway. Right when they check out and make the payment, PayPal is going to send variables behind the scenes to this IPN script waiting on your server. When those variables come and hit this script, we're going to gather them all up and we're going to send them back to PayPal. We're going to kind of bounce them right back to PayPal. PayPal is going to gather them up there again, verify everything, and bounce it back to us. Now let me explain the code. This first section is if the server request method is not equal to post, then we make the script die because we have to make sure there's posted variables coming to the script that we can bounce back to PayPal for verification. Okay, in the next part, we initialize the request variable and add CMD key value pair. The CMD key value pair is needed for the, uh, the PayPal callback. And PayPal is going to be looking for the CMD variable and its value here. That's the first set of many key value pairs you're going to stack into this request variable. So in this for each loop, what you're doing here is you're gathering the array of variables, the whole array of posted variables coming into this script, and each one is a key value pair. Then we run URL encode and strip slashes on each value. Then into the request variable, we stack each one as a, as a URL encoded variable with key value pairs separated by the and sign. That's what's going to get bounced back to PayPal. And that happens in this section of code right here. Now in all of the IPN scripts that I write, I like to use curl. So you can see I have a little note here that says now post all that back to PayPal server using curl and validate everything with PayPal. And here I put we will use curl instead of PHP for this for a more universal, universally operable script. FSOC open and the F functions in PHP sometimes have issues on some environments. So here you'll see a curl posting mechanism so it, you can send variables using curl instead of PHP's FSOC open and other functions that may not be available to the person programming the store and using IPN script on certain servers. And for those of you interested, you might want to know about PayPal's sandbox. PayPal also has a testing environment called the sandbox where you can run your IPN scripts, test everything, just like it was a real operating store. You can do the real checkout process there. It doesn't use real bank accounts. It uses dummy bank accounts and dummy people. But you can test your actual store in the sandbox environment. I just like testing live. If it works live, I run it. All right, so at the end of line 28 there, that's where it's finished. Posting to PayPal and curl gets a result back. So once that result is back, we can check that the result verifies right here. Now what I'm doing here in this line of code is not very important at all. I'm just taking the AND symbol out of each key value pair and replacing it with a line break. That way it will be rendered more like a list. Since we're done sending that to PayPal, we can do anything we want with this request variable, which is stacked with all the variables that are being posted to the script, which are a whole bunch. So here we check that the result verifies. Let me expand that so you can see it. So you're checking to see if the curl result is verified or not. If it is verified, you can put in the request variable list 
the very bottom, it'll render in this PayPal verified OK. If it's not verified, you put in the bottom of the request variable list, data not verified from PayPal, and you mail yourself all that information along with the request list. So the request list and this little message here will arrive in your email inbox. You have to make sure, it's very important that you change all of these you at your email dot com to your PayPal business email address. So anywhere in this IPN script where you might see you at your email dot com, change that to your PayPal business email address. It's very important. And you'll get this message if something goes wrong. If everything's okay, the script will continue to execute if things are verified from PayPal, which they should be if things are operating normally. Okay, let's collapse that back up. Now we check these four things before processing the transaction and you can handle them any way you wish. The first thing is make sure the business email returned is your business email because in the posted variables that are coming to this IPN script there's going to be a business email variable. You want to make sure that's you and that's your business email. And I have the script for these these checks 1, 2, and 3, 4. You can see I have the checks scripts laid out little examples of how you can check things. Number two is you make sure that the transaction's payment status is set to completed. Number three is make sure there are no duplicate transaction IDs going into the database. Number four is you make sure the payment amount matches what you charge for items. So that's how you defeat price jacking. So here's check one, check two, check three, and check four. So check number one is make sure the business email is yours. And that's how you do that right there gather the posted receiver email then you write out if receiver email is not equal to you at your email dot com or whatever your business email is then you exit this script before you do that you email yourself a little message so check number two is make sure that the transactions payment status is completed so you gather the posted variable here payment status so PayPal will send you this variable and it will have a value and it should be completed for most normal transactions and I have no code in there because you can figure out that on your own by doing research I've noticed that there's a couple of different reasons why a transaction would come back as not completed but it would still get posted into the database if you let it but if you want to exit the script here you want to send yourself a mail whatever about it I'm going to let you research that further let you guys discuss it on YouTube you know whatever you think is best if you're going to give people instant downloads for software or something, you definitely want to make sure that's completed. They pay by e-check. It takes a few days for that to process, and it won't be cleared. So you could get an IPN, an IPN message from PayPal saying that you had a transaction, somebody paid for something, but the payment status, this variable, is set to not completed yet. If it's not set to completed, you can do a certain thing here if you want to handle it. Handle it any way you like. You can also get in touch with PayPal and ask them how you should handle it. They would have the best answer, actually. And I know somebody's probably pretty knowledgeable that might be watching this, and they'll tell you how to handle it. All right, whatever. Let's go to... Uh, let's collapse that one back up. Now, for check number three and check number four, make sure there's no duplicate transaction IDs, and make sure the payment amount matches to beat price jacking. Number three and four, we have to connect to the database before we do that. So you run require once connect to mysql.php since connect to mysql.php is in the same living in the same directory as this file. So if you here I'll go to file open. So you see in store scripts my underscore IPN which is the script that we're working on now and here's the connect to mysql in the same folder. So that's how I'm referring to it very simple. So right there I'm connecting to the database. So check number three you grab the posted transaction ID from this transaction for this IPN message and you query the database. You select ID from transactions where transaction ID equals this transaction limit one. So you're just checking to see if this this transaction ID already exists in the database. If it does then you want to mail yourself that there's something wrong because there's a duplicate transaction ID trying to get posted to the system and it's not supposed to. Okay so the last check before we sync this transaction information into our database is you have to check to make sure the price matches and you defeat price jacking. So I wrote some code here 
and this is the only part of the script I haven't tested and if it doesn't work you'll have to figure out how to rewrite it to work the way we're intending it to so basically what we're doing is grabbing that product ID string that was coming from the cart.php script in the custom variable so right in the beginning of this video we assembled that custom variable remember and what that was was the product ID string and its quantities each product ID had a hyphen next to it and the quantity the number amount of how many and then a comma and then the next one and the next one the next so we take that product ID string and we are trim the comma off of the end because it's gonna have one extra trailing comma on the end and you really don't want that there so we remove that last comma off the end of the string then we explode the string and make it an array query all the prices out add them up and make sure they match up the payment gross amount so we make a new variable called ID string array and it's going to be an array that is made up of the explosion the product ID string using comma as delimiter delimiter means like a breakpoint we can use the commas as a breakpoint in the string make an official array out of it and that'll be in this variable here I started a full amount variable put a default value of zero in it in the for each loop is when that full amount variable is going to get compounded to get the full amount of what what the whole cart purchase should be so here is the for each loop so what you're doing is you're taking that ID string array that we set up here you're taking that array and you're busting it down as key value pairs so for each key value pair within the array it's going to run one pass through this for each loop now here we're going to use another explode function to break the hyphen remember each item ID has a hyphen next to it and then the quantity number we're going to take the item ID and the quantity number and make a little tiny array out of that by breaking it at the hyphen so we're using the hyphen as a delimiter here to break those two things apart and then you have product ID separate and product quantity separate by accessing the index number of that little array for the first item and the first item would definitely have an index of zero and that would be your product ID the second item in that array would definitely be the quantity and that would have an index of one in that array so once you get the product ID you can query the database for that product ID here and you have the product quantity so that way when you get the price out for that product ID you can multiply it by the quantity it's very slick huh and this is custom made for you and you can thank me later so the SQL query reads select price from products where ID equals this product ID coming through the loop once you gather the product price in the while loop here right outside the while loop you can do your little multiplication equation so product price is equal to product price times product quantity so if they bought two black hats it would take it and multiply the ten dollars that the hat cost times two and each product price would be compounded and added to this full amount variable using this line here full amount is equal to full amount plus product price so each product that's in the in the array is going to compound in this full amount variable then you can finally run number format on the full amount variable to make sure it has all the zeros it should have after the decimal point then you grab the MC gross or the payment gross that's coming from posted PayPal variables so after all that's over <laughs> you have a full amount variable and a gross amount variable this is the one gross amount is the one that's being posted from PayPal full amount is the one you just ever so cleverly gathered through the database with this little loop-de-loop -loop. so you gathered the full amount then you can take the gross amount and finally evaluate those two if full amount is not equal to gross amount then you might have a price jack something something screwy is going on you want to exit the script and not process things or you want to do whatever you want any way you want to handle that but just make sure before you go crazy that this programming is correct and you're getting the full amount correctly so when you test a, a checkout on your site those should definitely match if they don't match and you've done a normal checkout yourself on your site and those don't match then you know it's something wrong with my programming and somebody's got to fix it because I'm not fixing it part 20 I'm done even if it doesn't work I don't care I haven't tested it and I'm not gonna test it and you can code that you know 10 12 different ways but the logic is very stiff you want to get the full amount of what the checkout should be you want to gather that information from your database and compare that to what PayPal is saying 
the person checked out for. It's very simple. No matter if my code fails for you or not, that's the logic to approach with your programming. Alright, so if they make it past all four checks, finally put things into the database. Now here's some homework for you where I put examples of assigning local variables from the posted variables. So you can put the posted variables into local PHP variables. That way you can more easily insert things into your database using this query here. And I've set up this query to match exact for your table if your table matches my table. You know the transactions table that we created in the very beginning? If yours matches mine, this query is set up to rock and roll for you. All the variables are there. All you got to do is ga gather your posted variables into local variables to match all of these guys here. Because I only did a few just to show you how it's going to work. So that's part of your homework right there. And that's the end of the script. After you insert this into the database, this transaction, you close the MySQL query and you mail yourself normal IPN result, yay money. That means everything processed correctly. This is a normal transaction. It went into the database and you have money. You got to send somebody something in the mail. Now you got to ship somebody something or let them download some software or whatever. Okay. So I've enjoyed my time with you guys. You have your hands on the source code now if you happen to need it. And uh, we're all done. Remember, if things go wrong, if you find bugs in the system at all, tackle them. I'm not going to look at this anymore. I'm done. My hands are clean. Bye-bye.